Hey guys, before I start this video, very quick message. I know that a uh, lot of you guys, after you have done watching the video, you still have some question unanswered or if you need a help with the admission process in this particular university for this particular course, I can definitely contribute on that side. What you have to do is simply go on to www.nikshala.com, book an appointment. Let's get on a call for 30 minutes to 45 minutes. I'm pretty sure we will be able to answer all your questions. Alright guys, welcome back once again. So I'm sitting here with Deepak. He's here to share his experience of studying masters in electrical engineering from the University of Stuttgart. Now this is a university which is again known for many other programs but they've just started this program yes. and he's the first batch. Seems like they're very happy with the options and electives given to them. I'm pretty sure even you know some of you who are watching us can pave your path to this program if this is something of your interest. But before we go ahead, Deepak please walk us through your profile first of all and give us a, a little bit insight about where do you come from what bachelors have you done and all that hi guys uh, myself Deepak I completed my bachelors in electrical and electronics engineering from Bangalore coming to my profile I had a grade point average of 8.1 mm -hmm. along with that I had done two internships one in uh, Renault Nissan and another one in Bosch then my bachelor's project was also in Bosch. Mm -hmm. So that's it about my profile. Apart from that, I had participated in a lot of other activities like conferences and seminars, uh, many more things. Were you really sure that you wanted to do electrical engineering or you were also open for other master's programs? Uh, basically, my interest was artificial intelligence and machine learning. Okay. So the course here is electrical engineering. That's the name of the degree. And the content under it is basically artificial intelligence and machine learning. Okay. So this was my preference and because AI is applicable to any field. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to do something different, which mm -hmm. we don't get much in India. Mm -hmm. That was what I always wanted to do. Right, right. Uh, what kind of bachelors are eligible for your program? Basically graduates from uh, electrical and electronics engineering, telecommunications, and uh, computer science as well can apply. Basically, they, they don't need any specific degree because they ask you for your bachelor's module handbook. Mm -hmm. So the admission committee goes through your module handbook and if it matches with the module handbook of the bachelor course here, you are eligible. What are the other universities are known for electrical engineering in Germany? That, that would be difficult to quote because uh, the name of the degree is may not be exactly electrical engineering, but the subjects we study here, it is offered in other universities like FAU Erlangen is known for communications and signal processing. Yes. We have University of Paderborn, which again has electrical engineering. It is similar to this and also we have uh, OVGU Magdeburg. And of course, how can I forget Erveta? Mm -hmm. That's the mother of all. Yeah, yeah. If you consider Hochschule, I would say Hochschule Darmstadt. Mm -hmm. And Fach Hochschule Darmst uh, Dortmund mm -hmm. also has a course similar to this. It's mechatronics in embedded. Again, hop onto these websites. Yes. Um, and one yeah. thing, uh, this course which I'm studying is not mentioned on that. Uh -huh. How I found this is I was just going through the website of University of Stuttgart and then under their uh, listings this was given as MSc Electrical Engineering tentatively scheduled to start from winter semester. People who applied in my batch we didn't rely on that. If you want to know more I would suggest go through the websites of each and every university that would be more helpful. Makes sense. It may just take another 20 minutes more. 20 minutes per day that yeah. would be better than WhatsApp or Facebook if you do this that adds value. One of the points what really impresses me right now is how you managed the timeline yes. because without getting a degree and then already having an admission in hand yes. that was his case. I just began my eighth semester four weeks into my eighth semester I had the admit from Uni Stuttgart that doesn't right. happen with anyone especially for Germany. <laughs> right 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 um, let's bring back the conversation to basics right yes uh, tell us what are the um, deadlines for your application uh, for your course okay coming to the deadlines this you have to keep in mind for the winter intake the deadline is Jan 15 okay so if you want to start your studies from October yes the deadline is Jan 15 right if you want to start your studies in April that is the summer intake the deadline is July 15 okay so it's pretty advanced 
right and the deadlines are way ahead compared to other universities and was the application via uni assist or direct on the no this is website? simple our university of stuttgart has a portal called campus okay and it's just there's no cost of application it's a free application okay you just have to upload the required documents it's a very simple process what are the documents uh documents it varies from course to course for my course it's a bit different they ask you for your sop the statement of purpose your recommendation letters mm -hmm. your curriculum vitae and uh, your transcripts mm -hmm. from bachelors mm -hmm. and uh, another important thing which not many ask is your module handbook from the bachelors oh the thick one yes yes no okay. you will have the pdf of that in your ah, okay. university website and these guys here assess it they oh, decide whether you are eligible for this course based on seeing what you have studied in bachelors got it, got it. it's just not the transcripts because transcripts can mean anything they go through inside and see what exactly you have studied in that subject right right so that matters right. course module book can be you know you can ask your university uh, or college wherever you study yes it's, a, it's, a, it's just a document and you just download yeah. it and upload it here right Simple. right okay so you took all these documents did you get, get them uh, attested uh, I will say it's safer to attest the documents and upload them okay. rather than the originals directly. Right. Because what happens is for enrollment here, they ask uh, attested copies. Okay. So it's safer if you upload the attested copies while applying as well. Got it, got it. Did you give any GRE? Uh, no, I didn't give any GRE. My profile was simple. Okay. 8.1 with a few internships and projects. Right, right, right. And a good recommendation letter. And my intent was clear. The right, SOP right. matters a lot. Right. Bringing back this discussion into the timeline, right? Uh, this is 2020. Let's go back to 2019. So in 2019, uh, as he said, the deadline for winter intake was Jan 15th. Yes. That means 2018, uh, November, December, he was preparing the yes, documents. I got everything ready in November and December 2018. Right. 2019, the first week of Jan, the yeah. moment my seventh semester exams ended, yeah. I just uploaded everything and I wanted to be done. Apply. Yes. Okay. This was my target and I applied. They usually take six weeks to yes, get Yes, it's exactly six weeks. Jan 15 is the deadline. You get the notification on Feb 28. It's they are very strict with the dates. So that's how he got his results. That yes, yes. you are accepted when he just started his eighth yes. semester. Now, when you have a strong planning like this, uh, this is how results are driven. Uh, Deepak, do you want to shed some light on uh, how does the selection process happens in the background? Yes, uh, probably we were the first intake. So when we applied, we didn't have any idea. But I think it's better if the upcoming students yeah, have. Please go ahead. Yeah. So basically you are assessed on a scale of 120. Okay. So 80 points is given for you based on your CV, your projects and your SOP. And overall, how, how impressed they are with your profile, it's 80 points. That's a huge chunk. Mm -hmm. So I would say just keep up your profile, work on very good projects. Probably if the dean is impressed, he would give you a very good score. Mm -hmm. And the remaining 40 points is for your GPA. Okay. So they convert our GPA to the German scale. Yeah. And uh, if your GPA is better than 2.5, so for every 0.1 increase in 2.5, you get two points. Okay. For example, my German uh, GPA was 1.9. Wow. So I like from 2.5 to 1.9, it was a scale of point, uh, six, six divisions. So six into two, I scored 12 points there out of 40. Mm -hmm. And the remaining points out of 80, I don't know how much I was assigned. Probably my profile, as I said, with a good internships and projects, it was worth it. So they add both the sections out of 80, out of 40. The ones who cross 76 out of 120 are shortlisted mm -hmm. and uh, the seats are restricted. It's only 30 students per intake. So the top 30 who have scored more than 76 out of 120 get the admit. Wow. Can you also walk us through how is this course structured and what specializations can you do? Okay. So basically MSc Electrical Engineering at uh, University of Stuttgart offers six different specializations. Okay. So the first one is smart information processing. Mm -hmm. Then we have smart sensors. Then we have electromagnetics. The fourth one is communication systems. And then the fifth one is power electronics. Mm -hmm. 
and sixth one is nano and optoelectronics. Basically what I as a student have to do if I join this course is I have to pick one specialization within one month of enrollment. Okay. So before the exam registration period starts, by uh -huh. then I had to fix my specialization. Uh -huh. So under each specialization, there are a set of 10, eight to 10 subjects offered. Got it. And uh, you have to do six out of these eight to 10 as your core modules. So you pick one specialization and you do six out of eight or 10. It varies from each specialization. Mm -hmm. In my case, I have taken smart sensors as my specialization. Mm -hmm. And under smart sensors, we have eight different uh, subjects which are offered. Mm -hmm. I have to do at any cost six of these subjects. Okay, yeah. So six core modules are done. Apart from this, we have to do five elective modules. Mm -hmm. And the elective list is pretty interesting here. Basically, all the modules from all the specializations are the electives list. Oh, okay. So smart information processing has 10 subjects. Yeah. Smart sensors, eight subjects and power electronics, another eight and communication has few. All of these are the elective modules. Right. So you can subject five from them. Right, right, right. Can we talk a bit about um, what sort of, I mean, it's too early to ask you, trust me, but no. what sort of future do you see now after you complete this course? Okay, basically, uh, I'm more into machine learning, deep learning and signal processing. And uh, this is like the future. Mm -hmm. It's applicable to any field. And here at the Institute, I study these subjects. There are a lot of projects offered. Mm -hmm. It can be industry 4.0, it can be medical systems. Everywhere you go, it's AI now. Mm -hmm. So with by studying this, you can use this in any field, autonomous driving, anywhere and everywhere, industry 4.0. And also what uh, is the other possibility is if you end up with a very good score here, mm -hmm. the institute offers you a PhD. Yes, I heard this from other students also actually. Yes, so our university, if, if we do our masters here and end up with a very good score, you start your PhD straight here. Wow, um, I think there are research centers just around the campus, right? Yes, we our uh, department itself has a lot of research work like each institute has so many we have nearly 20 25 phd students in each wow. institute good good um deepak one last advice you have for people who are seeking to pursue the same course i would say remember the deadlines that's very important good. and get your documents right and another tip is if you're a student like me who's still in the seventh or eighth semester of bachelor uh, one additional document which I used is you get a certificate from your HOD of your department stating that you are a student of the institution. Mm -hmm. You have completed seven semesters with a grade point of whatever you have scored. And it is a surety that you are going to graduate in June of that year. That's okay. what I did. So I got a, it's like probably a clearance certificate. Yeah, yeah. Stating that I would pass my final exams and have my degree at, in June 2019. Wow. That okay. is a very good thing to have. It just gives the assurance to the admission committee that, you know, this guy wow. is good and he would be getting his degree. Right, right. I mean, again, it comes with a lot of trust. Yes. Um, you know, unless you're a... Yes. Yeah, a yeah you should have a good track record. Good, good repo with the professors yes. and their, you know... You don't have to go to dean directly for this because it's yeah. it's a big decision for it's, it's just your head of the department. Yeah, yeah. it's just go to HOD, uh, explain the, them the situation, show them the past grades what you yes. required. Yeah, good advice, man. Good solid advice. Thank yes. you so much for coming on yeah, my channel. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's all what we have uh, to offer. If you have any question regarding the specifics of the subjects, the specialization, please reach out to university directly. Uh, and they will give you right information and uh, yeah that's all what we have to offer to you from this video if you enjoyed it hit that thumbs up button and i'll see you guys next time bye bye